We're on the last talk of the day, and I have the pleasure to introduce you, Ken Rad. Ken, where are you? Well, <laughs> you may think maybe it's a good time to come in. And Ken is at the Department of Medical Biology at the University of Miami School of Medicine at Miami. And to summarize, Ken, I just wrote a sentence, and it's Isra Shakolai, Sh Sh man, encyclopedic man, because everything you need to know about E. coli is in his mind, and he has put lots of it in his database ecogene. Not everything is in ecogene, but part of his knowledge in E. coli. And it's been a huge amount of work since much before the genome was ready. I mean, this work started long before. He's now in Miami. He was, I mean, I think he studied in Berkeley, if I remember correctly. And then at one point he went to NCBI, where for a brief period of time he was responsible for GenBank, I mean, part of GenBank. And as links, I put Murray Dutcher, with whom you have published many, I mean, characterization paper, I mean, uh, real biological work. And Eugene Kunin, Mark Bordowski, Antoine Donchin, Claudine Medig, Guy Plunkett, Mari Berlin, all of those people with whom you have collaborated to analyze E. coli and to build the database. Now, when I was speaking on the first day of all those people which are submitting, I mean, lots of data to E. coli uh, to us, I mean, Ken is a winner from very far, you know, so, I mean, there is no, I mean, uh, uh, there's no way anybody can compete with Ken on the amount of data he submitted over the years into SwissProt. Just to show, this is just an email, uh, I mean, uh, trans I mean, list dating from uh, 98, just a snapshot from May 98 to May 99. So all those I emailed Ken sent, but each of them is not just two, three sentences. Some of them are things when you print out are like 20 page or 30 page. I mean, basically, I used to say that Ken was basically providing his daily, before blog existed, in fact, you were blogging E. coli and giving us your E. coli blog. And just to finish before letting Ken discuss, uh, make his talk, you may not have never seen that picture of your daughter when she was very small, because I don't think I ever had a chance to show you that picture. Oh, nice. So here's Ken with his daughter when she was very small. She's not tall up now. So that was, yeah, so she's probably, that picture was probably taken 11 years ago then when you were at NCBI. Now can you hear me? Okay. This week we celebrate more than an institution. We celebrate an individual. And I toast you, Amos, for your magnificent life achievement. Your boundless energy and ideas, the heart and soul of Swiss Pro's my life. I also thank you for a wonderful and much needed vacation. Three days in Fort Dole City has really honed my nonverbal communication skills. I can gesture and hug and kiss and dance and play music and read body language and even used a little ESP to make some of the friendliest and nicest people I've ever met in my life. I made my first trip to Brazil here and it's not going to be my last and it's an affinity I can only akin, make as akin to the Italians I've met in life. I'm a native Californian, went to Berkeley as Amos mentioned and I work in Miami so um, somebody asked me how I injured my nose. I don't know if it shows up well or not. It uh, wasn't a bar fight or an accident on those fabulous moto taxis, no, it was a surfing accident. And I found that the waves here in Fortaleza, they crash right at the very end, right at the end of the beach. So if you want to get the full exciting ride, you come down and boom, take the hit with your face. 
So on the second run, I improvised a new technique, and one second before I hit, not even knowing what I was doing, my body turned around and I hit on my back. And now I got all these marks on my back, and by that method I hope to, um, in fact, conceal most of my uh, recent injuries from the viewpoint. This is the first letter I got from Amos. I met Amos in 1991 when I was uh, hanging out at NCBI about a month before I took a unique position as the assistant to the director for five years, which required me to leave my beloved lab rat attitude at the FDA, where uh, my most knowledgeable or acknowledgeable accomplishment was probably uh, being on that first panel that approved Botox as a human medicine. And uh, I think this is probably the tone a lot of you got in your first letters. First, the little dot, dot, dots at the bottom mean that Amos wrote a much longer letter than that. But uh, right away, it's hello, and let's get down to business. I just met you, but give me this, give me this. And you got a deadline down here, I think, too. Give me some stuff and give it to me soon. It was about 9 o'clock at night, Washington time, and a couple of minutes later, I was responded, because I was working on Ecogene, also with a bunch of stuff in the middle left out, uh, that I did. He had asked me in that previous email if I'd looked at Swiss Pro, and I was pretty impressed. I thought he was doing a good job. And uh, I also thanked him for the chocolate. <laughs> so that should be familiar to a lot of people. I also had the opportunity to publish a paper with Amos. And uh, he doesn't know yet, but we've got to redo this. There's a lot of changes since 1998 on the small proteins and challenges that they offer. The challenges are still there. Using E. coli as an example for this and many other topics is, has been a real pleasure. A little bit later, I was fortunate enough to have Amos as an editor. And uh, he did a pretty good job at that, too. And, here with uh, another example of how much fun it is to be with Amos is on a visit to Amos in 1993. I had the pleasure of meeting Frederica Liszczek and Pedro Gonet, and we started a collaboration. And in fact, in this collaboration uh, is sort of the tone of what I think is the, the combination of bioinformatics research, database management, and experimental research that I think is the paradigm of the present. Uh, through uh, comparing a, a variety of bioinformatics analysis and finding experimental evidence, we were able to come up with a curated set of E. coli lipoproteins, 81 proven, and what we consider the gold standard prediction right now, but I was trained as an experimentalist and predictions are supposed to be validated, hypotheses are supposed to be tested. That's why I took a while to get my NIH grant because I kept insisting that I have money for a laboratory as well as a database and they thought that was a rather unusual request. Um, one of the things we're trying to do now is check those 44 predicted lipoproteins and the other 30 or 40 ones we don't actually believe are lipoproteins, but that somebody has predicted. Because if you're going to get the final answer, you can't stop at the predicted, you have to go down until you don't find any more, and that means proving a negative, which is doable. So uh, in 2004, I finally was able to secure enough NIH funding to uh, get a programmer, I'm not a programmer, a uh, technician, uh, and an annotator and realized my long-standing dream of turning Ecogene from a uh, flat file or a catalog onto a real dynamically generated uh, web page and web services operation. And uh, this is actually my opportunity to announce that to the world. I was going to say we're out of pre-release, but we're not quite out of pre-release. We will be very soon. It's indeed a very functional website still. So I call it the electronic genetic map, and I want to just take a few minutes of your time to explain why I call it that and why I consider that important and why I think that genomics should embrace the traditions of genetics, including allele numbers, the way to organize your strains, the way to, to deal with standardized genetic maps and standardized gene names as a benefit, not a curse, that seems to have been taken. A GenBank entry is not a genetic map, although they are certainly treated that way. So the roots of uh, Ecogene is the electronic genetic map. Start with the E. coli genetic maps, the taylor Bachman maps from 64 to 90. Uh, Barbara Brockman's been an inspiration to me since she first talked to me as a graduate student as if I was a professor. She treated everyone equal, and her attitude of uh, no nonsense and uh, accuracy uh, and service have been with me to this day. Uh, then in my mind, we're approaching another 20th anniversary next year. In my mind, the beginning of the genomic era was the publication of the high quality, high resolution, seven, over 7,000 restriction sites, manually drawn car map in cell in 1987. Uh, I was walking down the hall, it, it blew my mind. I looked very carefully and noticed it wasn't digitized. I met Yuji in a meeting in 1988, asked him if he minded if I digitized it. Antoine Danchan also digitized it. And we moved to Ecomap 1 uh, in 1990, which involved making a hybrid map where we uh, shotgun assembled about 15% of the E. coli genome that had been sequenced to date and stored in GenBank in small pieces. 
Apparently, people didn't realize FASTA needed to be searched with both complement and the normal strand at that time, and there were lots and lots of genes adjacent to each other, and the gene spaces in between that had not been done, and that led to the Bordowski gene hunting and all that. Uh, then Barbara retired, and her successor, uh, Mary Berlin, uh, and I collaborated on making the transition from a genetic map to a physical map, and that was in 1996. In doing so, I, I, I realized that minute wasn't exactly the term I wanted to use anymore for our map units, uh, although it is commonly used as a synonym for percent, which I also found inadequate, so I came up with the term centosome, which uh, has been used by the salmonella geneticist, because I also did the salmonella map, but that's about it, and it's 1% of any chromosome, but it, it's a, a physical map unit. Uh, then the complete genome sequence came out in 1997, and uh, I suppose that's the beginning of the Blattner map which uh, has sort of reigned since then. In uh, 1998, I, we split into two maps and I published a physical version of the map uh, where basically I annotated the rest of the genome for Fred. Uh, he had uh, taken a policy of using the longest TTG, ATG, or GTG start code on to make the longest ORF, and uh, this led to a large number of uh, uh, incorrect or unlikely start sites. So I went to town. I'm not a computer programmer, but um, I do like to work. So I uh, re-annotated them, and in the 98 map I published uh, that I had a flat file with 600 of these start site revisions, 100 of which had been uh, proven in the literature by internal sequence analysis, and the others which were uh, pretty unequivocal if you use the standard methodologies of looking for ribosome binding sites, likely start codons, minimizing overlap, comparative analysis, and on and on. Just using several multivariate methods at once on a gene-by-gene -gene basis, I basically came up with uh, revised annotation and published that in 1998. I also devised the Y gene nomenclature, which you might have noticed uh, Amos was uh, actually the first thing he asked me about was the Y gene, systematic nomenclature for naming ORFs. And in the sequence, if they had been in Swiss Pro, they had a Y name. If they weren't, they had a B number. And despite having uh, published a genetic map with reannotation, which I didn't think was an obscure publication, and providing that as a flat file, uh, every genomic resource used a GenBank entry, and uh, all the clones made in Japan, all the deletions made in Japan, and every uh, chip that, array that I've ever seen <clears throat> has uh, not used those annotations. So being a bit puzzled about that, I asked around and found out if it wasn't in a GenBank entry, it was not going to be used because of some parser problem or uniformity. So I struggled and struggled, and uh, recently I'm very happy to announce that almost all of those annotations are in the revised GenBank entry through a collaboration with uh, Guy Plunkett that was uh, stimulated by a meeting that Monica Riley set up at Woods Hole. And the deal was I had to sit there for four days and go over a hundred of my procedures, uh, my revisions, uh, in front of uh, uh, Hiratada, Mori, and, uh, and Guy Plunkett. I convinced them my methodology was solid, and they uh, have now in Japan remade the clones remade the, uh, the uh, several hundred uh, mutations according to these annotations, and uh, I just got all those in my lab right after they remade them. Uh, in addition, that annotation in GenBank, uh, I hope now is used to uh, recreate some chip resources and make things a little bit easier to interpret. In fact, one of the reasons I finally was able to get some NIH funding was uh, there were so many errors of interpretation and experiment based on these, uh, just to name a few. Uh, a misinterpretation of mutants in the SECM regulatory peptide, um, just a long list of things where uh, mutations in promoters were thought to be mutations in N-terminal protein sequences. Uh, I finally got a list long enough that uh, the panel I went to at NIH, which uh, wasn't human genome, they weren't, didn't have any E. coli geneticists, and uh, wasn't any computer places, it was uh, good old MCB2 where everybody else was, and I finally managed to convince E. coli geneticists not because I documented it, but I guess because each one of them had run into a similar problem and wanted something done about it. And so uh, here's uh, edition 10 of uh, Mary's map when we split, the last one, and the physical map where I uh, not only had the full annotation of the rep intergenic elements, all the Y genes, but also, to my knowledge, uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong, the first comprehensive annotation of defective, now called pseudogenes, uh, in a genome. As I was annotating them, I just noticed a lot of these things didn't seem complete. Uh, right after that map, Barbara passed away, and uh, this epitaph that uh, was written by uh, Ray Barrett uh, pointed out that I was unfortunately too late to catch any of her micro courses at Berkeley, where I got my degree, my PhD in microbiology, uh, but I did get to be the last graduate student for uh, Duderoff, who was a Van Neal student and promoter. 
So here we are, the electronic genetic map, among other things, has updated gene names and functions, revised gene intervals. Just a second. Uh, extensive bibliographies, <clears throat> this is a little better, <clears throat> extensive bibliographies which uh, involve me every day checking PubMed releases for coli and the day's date. Uh, and I'm pretty up to date and uh, pretty comprehensive back to 1997. Uh, comprehensive annotation of prophages in their genes, comprehensive annotation of pseudogenes, IS elements, intergenic regions, uh, full protein sequences, and lately we've been concentrating on improving the annotation for the sRNA genes of E. coli. Uh, Going from a flat file to basically a panorama catalog that I could manage, which allowed me to at least make a website with gene pages on it, uh, we came at a time when uh, MySQL 5 was uh, in beta and available, and we could get a public domain and uh, open source database that had uh, triggers and stored procedures and uh, a real relational database. So uh, we call this MAPS, and that's because we use the MySQL DB engine, Apache server on Mac OS X, uh, almost all our coding in PHP, starting with a PHP nuke template that we uh, modified quite a bit that I thought was uh, appropriate, would save me some of the headache of uh, the social software. Uh, we came up with some maps that are dynamically generated using PNG that are uh, linked graphics and uh, a lot of complex SQL searches, just like everybody else has been doing. Uh, this is our front page where you come in, and uh, I don't have time to give you the full breadth of, of what we're doing. What I want to do is give you enough of a taste so that you might log in yourself and explore it and find out if uh, the data in Ecogene can assist you in your research of proteomics or anything else, even if you're not working on E. coli and you want to know more about the homolog in E. coli or the gene intervals in E. coli or the protein intervals in E. coli. Uh, a number of the features that we put, I was also able to... Uh, get the web services for print map and map search, which is how I uh, assembled and displayed the hybrid maps. Uh, it's actually reverse map search that we have found useful now, not to take uh, sequence generated restriction maps and align them to the genomic restriction map of Kohara, but to take individual published restriction maps of genes that have not been mapped to the genome, and we've successfully done this with uh, MMNC and a few other genes, and map them to a sequence generated restriction map uh, with statistics. And Webb Miller helped me develop, develop this program many years ago. Um, and as far as I know, it, uh, it's uh, the only real searching algorithm for aligning uh, uh, dynamically. Although, again, Antoine Dachin developed a nice search tool. And previous to that, there have, of course, been restriction map alignment programs for making contigs. And print map is the displays that we'll show you some examples. But when I used to read a genetic map, I liked that gene list, and I still like a gene list. Uh, we have a lot of genes now, so we've devised a list, for example, here from era H to RG is in a pull-down menu. Uh, what I used to do is go down and see if there were some gene names I didn't recognize. There's a lot of gene names now, so it's a little more complicated than that. We spend a lot of energy on our relational search. In fact, uh, I like these umlaut acritic marks, and I found out that uh, no one in PHP had dealt with it, so we created Unicode PHP so that you can actually search, retrieve, and display uh, your European names with their accents on them. Uh, that, uh, it's not exactly trivial, but uh, I wanted that. Another th feature I want to show you here is the ECK numbers uh, that have recently uh, been developed, again, as part of this Woods Hole Consortium, as external IDs not specific to any E. coli database uh, that can be used to facilitate crosslinks. And one example is I'll show you I crosslink to a lot of databases. And the links that I make to Regulon DB initially were on gene name, uh, which is uh, unique but not stable. And as soon as uh, Julio, who we'll hear from tomorrow, switched to ECK numbers about 15 minutes later, our, our actual uh, contacts between the two were complete. And uh, the system we've set up uh, in the relational databases, uh, basically if you use any of the accession numbers we already have stored in the database, and I'll show you that, and an URL, uh, I can basically set up uh, links of all of my gene pages to all of your gene pages in about 30 seconds. Uh, so what are some of the other things that we have here? Well, let's take a look. Uh, this is a gene search result where you put in uh, select RNA type and put in the key sRNA, and you come out with the full set of sRNAs that we have annotated. Uh, this is a basic gene page, and uh, there's way too many features here for me to kind of point out right away, but I'm very happy about these PNG maps down here. The red are pseudogenes, uh, the light blue are clockwise, the darker blue are counterclockwise, and the purple are RNAs and the key is down here. Uh, we have a bar of links. We also have a pull-down menu of additional links. Uh, the EcoSearch, uh, EcoBlast, and something I'm very happy with uh, called the Verified Set. 
The verified set is uh, a collection of uh, uh, over 700 verified uh, protein by N-terminal sequencing admin degradation collected laboriously from the literature and all uh, documented. And uh, this was used as a uh, benchmark test with uh, Tom Schneider in order to do an analysis of ribosome binding sites a few years ago. Uh, we do a bunch of standard calculations. We have pre-run blasts, of which I'm going to uh, fold those environmental sequences we heard about today with GenBank, the way it was the first few weeks where everybody complained, because those environmental sequences are great intermediate sequences to use that uh, transitive rule and, and uh, connect families. Uh, and so you'll be able to find all that. Uh, basically, you could download the whole uh, genome set of blasts in a few minutes rather than uh, wait, 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 wait. We also have a long list of synonyms here. And everything is stored in the database. Everybody's accession numbers, all the synonyms, everything is stored. This is what some of the pop-ups are. Right here we have all the people that have done N-terminal sequencing of the HNS gene. Fortunately, they all agreed. Um, and a description of some text that's algorithmically generated that tells you whether uh, methionine aminopeptidase did cleave off uh, the N-terminal methionine or not, and whether or not uh, signal peptidase 1 had made a, probable cle had made a cleavage. Uh, we've also, as I said, in addition to the highly curated databases and the ones some that couldn't fit on here, uh, we've been making connections, and this list is growing, uh, to all other databases we can find that have information uh, based on a gene page. And in, in such a manner, you can uh, navigate uh, the collective information from a lot of people that have been working on RegulonDB, EcoPsych, the Genetic Stock Center, ASAP, collecting information from E. coli, all in relatively easy-to-learn interfaces. Um, at your fingertips. Uh, what I really wanted to do was have those burst into tabs, but my programmer hasn't figured that one out yet. You could click a button and have a window in uh, Safari or Firefox where uh, it would just everything would be a tab, and you can just walk through them. Uh, we've also made the links to PDB and brought some pictures in and uh, the usual cast of characters. These are the, what the original print map outputs look like. We now generate them dynamically uh, for people who like this format, and these are the numbers of the original Kohara pages that led to all that. Uh, these are the senosomes, these are the KB addresses of the genetic map in that format. Uh, as I said, I spent a lot of time with my bibliographies and uh, try to keep them as up-to-date as possible, and I, I hope that this allows people to get to abstracts, which are very nice summaries written by authors, and actual papers when they want to learn in depth about a particular gene, obviously aimed at uh, people working on uh, smaller projects than most of the people in here. Uh, my colleagues at the bench of E. coli research. Uh, there's also curator user submitted comments down here. If there's no name on it, as 99% of them have no name on them, uh, that means they're credited to me. I'm not trying to be comprehensive in my gene descriptions, and I don't download data automatically from other databases, including the snapshot data. Uh, makes my descriptions unique enough that uh, when they're borrowed, I can spot that pretty easily. Not that it matters, please borrow them. Uh, some of the things we linked to uh, recently because of the resources that made available in Japan for uh, all the knockouts of E. coli except for 300 genes that uh, are termed essential because they couldn't make knockouts. Again, some more negative data, but very convincing. Uh, they have clones. A lot of people are getting these in their laboratories, and we're going to, uh, in addition to the information at Genobase, uh, we're checking all of these in our own lab, or many of them, not all, many of them in our own lab, and we'll report our experience uh, working with these. Uh, this is a terrific site that shows uh, whether or not they were able to overproduce the protein in the clones they sent, and that shows the GFP localizations, uh, as well as the primers for the knockouts, which are right back there. Uh, RegulonDB is a wonderful site we'll hear more about tomorrow, where you can cover some, find some information that we don't cover in Ecogene, which is the regulatory binding sites for the uh, transcription factors of E. coli, uh, as well as an uh, excellent and uh, very highly curated annotation of the transcription start site experiments from S1 and primer extension experiments that Julio and his team have done. Uh, the Genetic Stock Center is a place where you can go and find strains that have mutants in this gene, uh, order them over the internet, and uh, get them in your laboratory a few days later uh, with my collaborator, Mary Berlin, at the Stock Center. Uh, this is ASAP. This is the database that the GenBank annotations are now being dumped from, and uh, Guy Plunkett is in charge of those updates, and we're collaborating to keep uh, the annotation going. We have new ECK numbers, we have new pseudogene assignments, and we have new small genes, all since the uh, snapshot workshop that we need to get into GenBank again. 
Uh, we would like to be able to update uh, GenBank records and the RefSeq record uh, on a regular basis from ASAP, and we're working with GenBank to try to get the same kind of status that uh, SGD has. Uh, this is a, another gene I chose for uh, something that's just we've been getting into lately that we like a lot, and it's topics. And the topic button down here happens to be a pathway button, and it brings up another topic, and that is the eco team of outside collaborators. Uh, my star eco team member is Chris Rates, and he kindly provided uh, E. coli customized uh, diagrams uh, for all of his work on the biosynthesis of uh, lipid A and associated outer membrane proteins. And uh, we are very grateful for Chris for that. But uh, that's a lot of work, and so I got another idea that uh, when I was updating a recent paper on Trix A, I noticed a wonderful figure in PubMed Central that sort of explained it all to me very simply, the two functions of TRXA. And uh, let me know if I'm breaking the law, but I'm just linking directly to the figures out of the papers in PubMed Central when I can to save people a few clicks. But if they're interested enough, they just backtrack, they'll find this citation in the bibliography and go read this paper. I think that uh, this is a, a, a wonderful opportunity that I have not been seen taken advantage of to present information directly from the authors uh, to people in a quick and efficient manner. Uh, there are also uh, gene-specific databases popping up. Um, uh, I think we, we've seen uh, that certain genes, uh, UVRB is one I saw on a poster today, that are the focus of studies. And if somebody wants to throw up a web page where they look at this gene across all organisms or, or just for E. coli, we certainly would want to get to it. And there's a wonderful site on adenyl cyclase uh, that we link to. Uh, so even if I don't quite get it described right, you can come and see what this expert has to say about this uh, very important uh, regulatory protein in E. coli. Uh, just to remind you here, we're going to talk briefly about the depiction of prophages, uh, pseudogenes, IS elements, uh, and intergenic regions. I've been involved in uh, cataloging and numbering uh, rep elements in intergenic regions for some time. Uh, these are important uh, stabilizers of, uh, of messages. Uh, they have other functions as well. Uh, when people do distance-based operon predictions, uh, they don't look at the content. And if the content of the distance between your genes is filled with rep sequences, you're probably uh, in the same operon. Uh, we have a magnifying glass. Somebody keeps saying, why don't you tell people what this is? Okay, This is a magnifying glass, and if you touch it, you'll get amplification. We're uh, in the process of uh, trying to set up a system where there will be um, a lot of mouse overs with information that will irritate you so much that it will force you to register so that you can click the button, please, I know enough, turn the mouse overs off. Uh, we haven't quite implemented that yet. But as you can see, when you get to a prophage, like the Quinn Kim prophage, uh, we get phage genes. Phage genes are pseudogenes. Phage, gene, uh, phage genes are very small genes. Uh, evolution, they even have some overlapping genes, which are very uncommon outside of the prophages. Uh, and so in order to view those, you can go up a couple of levels in magnification, one to just see the genes clearly, and another one to more clearly look at how much overlap and space there are between these genes. IS elements, and putting those into an electronic map, uh, did take a little bit of thinking because they're jumping all over the place. They're the same gene everywhere. I didn't want a different gene page for, for the IS element proteins like the um, transposases, which is really what they encode. Uh, and so we came up with multi-addresses. So here you see we have uh, IAS5K, and these were all numbered in the original Kohar map. And uh, it's present not just at this location, but on multiple address, it's present at all these other locations. That one uh, is my way of saying I'm sorry Gunnar couldn't make it because I've been focusing on membrane proteomics, and I have uh, the blue native SDS complex information in and his validation of uh, 601 in termini in. And this is just a picture of some of the intergenic repeat types that we have in detail. And I have to end by saying we've got a download facility and an upload facility. You can put a file or a table with any combination of synonyms or accession numbers, any mixture you want. You upload them, and then you'll be able to come to our download page and select uh, and see a sample of which from JavaScript and select any set that you want. In other words, you could take a mixture of everything and come out only with Swiss ProtIDs or only with ECK numbers. Uh, this is how I screen scrape and everything else to make links. Without this tool, I could not make links to all these other databases so easily. Uh, this is a tool that's available to everybody. We're also completely up to date on the sequence changes, and uh, we have a utility span up that anybody who has intervals from the first version of the genome sequence, they want converted to the new version, is there. There's really no more time left, but I just want to show you that, in fact, oops, 
People like summaries, so let's see if I can get you a summary there. There's a summary of the current content. And since I'm out of time, I'm not going to talk about our sRNA work, but I'm going to show you that we do do work. Primer extensions, northern analysis, predicting terminators. And if I could just take a minute to say that uh, this phylogeny on this sRNA is fascinating. It's only an E. coli and salmonella. In salmonella, there's two copy at two loci. We can identify those same loci and see that there was tandem duplications at each one of them in E. coli to go from two copies to five copies. One transposition and two local tandem duplications. When those tandem duplications were made, they made unique duplications of neighboring material, which I call pairs. This material here was duplicated for the purpose of duplicating those sRNA genes. Call this the Eco Home Team. Uh, I got enough money for a couple of student programmers. Uh, summer student I didn't have to pay. Uh, a postdoc, actually my first postdoc ever, who started last week. Uh, a technician and an annotator. And people who worked on this project but since had to move on. Thank you. Any question from the audience? Okay. Let's go to dinner. Good question. Thank you very much again. Yeah.